In this module, we will get hands-on with the distance alert demo run from an external host. We will review the setup for the MKSIL2 and its external host, and then we will remind the TLB protocol for the distance alert. Finally, we will run the demo step by step. The Raspberry Pi is a low-cost computer widely used in the DIY space and a great entry point for Linux-based operative systems, which is a great reason to use it as the external host for a hands-on example. This model will showcase the distance alert demo, as previously detailed in session 2, using the Raspberry Pi as the external host, driving the QN1990 throughout. To run this hands-on demo, we will use a Raspberry Pi 4 Model B with 4GB of RAM, but the 2 and 8GB RAM models are suitable as well. The Raspberry Pi operative system used is the official 32-bit image released on 7th of May of 2021. You can follow the Raspberry Pi official website for the steps to bring it up. To run the distance alert, we will need the MK Shield 2 with an SR150 antenna board. The jumper configurations for the MK Shield 2 are default. The J2 needs to be set as it is powering the QN1990 on. The J401 jumper needs to be set in position 1C because it is selecting the ultra wide one module to be enabled by the QN1990. The J402 jumper needs to be set in position 1C as well to communicate with the ultra wideband module. That is, the ultra wideband signals will be routed to the QN1990. Finally, the J100 will be set to position 2 or 3 to drive power from the USB. To communicate the TLBs between the Raspberry Pi and the MK Shield 2, a micro USB cable will be used. Simply connect the USB end to the Raspberry Pi and the micro USB end to the MK Shield 2. The distance alert uses the DLBs to encode the commands to handle the application states, its responses, and the distance alert notifications. The DLB stands for Type, Length, Value, and is an encoding scheme that describes a packet which contains a type field followed by a length field, which is then followed by a value field. The length field contains the length in bytes of the value field that comes right after it. The DLB implementation for the distance alert has two bytes for the length field, and the value field may contain a subtype field. Now let's view in detail the TLBs that will be used in the distance alert. The distance alert is started with the command TLB, which is identified by the app command type. It contains two bytes on the value field, the app star subtype and the distance alert app, which is used to indicate the distance alert is selected. After sending this command, we expect the response with the same type and subtype, but this time the value field has a result code which is 2000 in hexadecimal that stands for success. If a different value is received, that will mean that an error has happened. Once the anchor starts ranging with one or more tags, we will start receiving distance alert notifications. These notifications are identified by the app notification type 0A in hexadecimal. The value field will contain 19 bytes. The first corresponds to the subtype that identifies the notification as distance alert. This is followed by 6 bytes of the Bluetooth Low Energy MAC address, then 9 bytes of the Bluetooth short name, 2 bytes for the distance value, and finally 1 byte that will indicate the threshold at which the attack is located at. To stop the distance alert application, we'll use the stop command. It shares the type field with the previous command, but it has the app stop subtype instead. After sending this command, we expect the response with same type and subtype and success code. We will run the distance alert by using the Raspberry Pi as the external host. To do so, we'll follow these steps. First, we will open two command lines. The first will be used for reading the TLB notifications and the second for sending the TLB commands. To communicate with the shield before sending in a command, we'll need to configure the serial port using the stty command on the second console. On the first console, we will enable the notifications with hex dump command with some formatting to be able to read the dump better. From here, everything is set up and the distance alert can be started by sending the start command from the external host. After receiving the success response, the first console will start outputting the stream of notifications once the attack is powered on. Finally, we will terminate the application by sending the stop command from the second console. Let's just start by opening two terminals on the Raspberry Pi and ensure that the MK Shield 2 is connected to it. Now we will set the serial port on the second terminal by sending the stty command. This command sets the right baud rate and the necessary configurations to be able to see the data received from the serial port correctly. 
In the first console, we run the hexdump command to display the notifications when we start receiving them. We continue by starting the distance alert by sending the start command. To do so, we send the exact TLB we saw previously by using the echo command. Now looking at the first console, we see the response TLB. Let's proceed to turn on one tag with the ultra open tag KSR40 binary as delivered with the USB content and we should just start receiving the distance alert notifications. Let's take one notification and decode the receive TLB. First, we can identify the tag field, which corresponds to the 0A in hexadecimal. The two next bytes are the length field, which converting to decimal is 19, that is the expected value length. The first byte from the value field is A3, which is the subtype that identifies the distance alert notification. From here, we can start reading the rest of the value fields. The MAC address is contained on the next six bytes, which are 00, 60, 37, C7, 7B, 70. For the short BLE name, we read the next nine bytes that converted to ASCII read MK slash 7B70, which is the default name for the tag that we are ranging against. The distance value is the next two fields, which indicate a distance of 45 centimeters, which corresponds to the threshold zero as read on the last value field. We can now stop the distance alert demo by sending the stop command. Once the response TLB with the success code is received, we stop receiving notifications.